Ciao everyone, I have just come back from Milan a week ago and Italy is well known for being one of the best places to be gluten free so I did take a little bit of a vlog while I was there and I have a lot of things to share. So without further ado, this is Gluten Free in Milan. As you know my mum's been over here and one thing she wanted to do was go traveling somewhere in Europe while she was staying in London so we decided on Milan because one it's good for gluten-free food two she'd never really been we'd both sort of passed through it a couple of years ago but we've never been to Milan and three it was cheap it's pretty cheap to be honest I do have a couple of disclaimers and you'll understand this more throughout the video the end of August in Italy, a lot of places go on holidays. A lot of food places, bakeries, restaurants have two weeks break, which I think is a fantastic thing to do and every country should have just a two week so they sort of shut down. We weren't planning on going in this two weeks. Unfortunately, mum had to change her trip because she got COVID, so we had to also move the Milan trip and it ended up falling within this lovely two weeks where everything closes down. We got on pretty fine regardless, which is a testament to how good Italy is at gluten-free, but you'll see how it does affect us in this video. But let's just jump straight into it. So we left on Sunday morning, all the bloody trains weren't working as they never do in London. So we took a coach to the airport and got on the plane. Our plane was delayed because it's Ryanair. And we ended up having about a seven, eight hour travel day. So when we got to the hotel, all we did was check in and then immediately go out for dinner. But our hotel was actually lovely. We stayed at the Best Western Gallus, which was kind of a very nicely placed hotel to stay in. Very central, easy to walk to a lot of things. Um, and it wasn't too expensive. It had a pool. So I definitely recommend it. But we were starving, so we thought, let's go out for dinner. On the way, we saw these two really beautiful buildings. The architecture was amazing, and they all have full-grown trees on their balconies. The first place that we went to was O Peperinos, which I did look up on Google, and it said it was open. First rule of the two-week holiday in August that I probably should have learned quicker, do not trust Google for opening times, because when we got there, unfortunately, it was closed for two weeks, <laughs> which is a shame, but never fear. There was another restaurant close by that is notoriously good for gluten-free food all across Italy. It doesn't just exist in Milan, which is Mama Eats. And they have a menu that does everything gluten-free. They actually have two separate kitchens, two different chefs, two different prep areas to make this happen, which I just think is phenomenal. We got there, ordered an Aperol spritz and a couple of pizzas because we were hungry. I just got a plain margarita pizza. Mum got some sort of quattro pizza, which had mushroom and aubergine and artichoke on it. Not really sure what's going on there, but it was delicious. In Italy, they just fundamentally understand gluten-free flour. I mean, look at this crust. Look at it. You would not know that it's gluten-free. In fact, they actually do this thing where they put all the gluten-free food on transparent or coloured plates. And that's the only reason we were like, okay, this is gluten-free. Because otherwise, you wouldn't know. I even saw them bring out the gluten pizzas and there was like no difference. Mum and I aren't ever going to pass up on an opportunity for gluten-free dessert, especially tiramisu. So we ordered the pistachio tiramisu, which was less coffee, more just beautiful pistachio flavour. It was fantastic. It was delicious. It was, I think, maybe the best tiramisu of the trip. We did get a few. <laughs> After dinner, I had noticed that we'd walk past Eataly, which is a sort of food department store. They've got them in several places around the world. There's one in London just down the road from me. There's one in New York, other places. But I was like, let's go to the Italian Eataly because it's Eataly, it's an Eat Italy. So surely they'll have more gluten-free things. And I was 100% correct. The pastas were very similar to what you get in London. So I wouldn't be too fussed about going there if you're going there for pasta. But they did have a lot of other things that we don't get. Like a lot of torta, which I don't really understand. I think it's a flourless chocolate cake generally. I might be wrong on that. But they both had the torta caprese and these beautiful little mini ones, tenerina, which I, I bought and ate. And it was like a very dense but sort of crumbly, chocolatey cake thing. Very rich and gooey though, if that makes sense. Kind of like a flourless brownie. They also had amaretti biscuits, I believe they're called, which a lot are naturally gluten-free because I believe they're made with almond flour. Not something that I really enjoy, but they're a good traditional Italian 
biscuit if you're looking to try some. Then we found the chocolate section and the fridge section that had even more cakey pudding type things as well as like several several types of panna cotta. We found a whole shelf of gluten-free biscuits as well as different types of gluten-free flour mixes like for pizzas or for bread, focaccia, etc etc. And then I also found these weird Aperol spritz lollies that turned out to be like digestive things. Very strange. I bought two packets. I don't know why. And that was the end of our first day. We just went back to the hotel because we were tired. So in the morning, we got up and went to the sixth floor, which is their lovely restaurant terrace area. And they had this sort of buffet breakfast. I think it was only about £10 each, which was pretty good considering the options that they had. My breakfast choice has become a lot more erratic at buffets. Uh, I'm talking eggs and watermelon and yogurt. What a combination. We told the lady that we're also gluten-free and she's like, oh, come here to the secret cupboard. And she got out all of these <laughs> gluten-free treats for us, which were like some freons and some muffins. They also had some bread, but I didn't feel like bread that morning. Also that morning I had a really good cappuccino and I was like, that's all I'm drinking on this trip. My blood was literally cappuccino and Aperol spritz. For the entire four days which may have not helped considering it was like 33 degrees and I felt a bit dehydrated when I got home. We uh, headed up to the rooftop to look at the view which was just stunning. You could see the entire skyline from basically every direction and because it's just who I am I took some of the little gluten-free snacks up with me and also wanted to have a few on me during the day just in case I couldn't find anything to eat. We headed out and did some sightseeing and some shopping, but I'm not really here to show you that. I'm here to show you the food. And one of the most important things on my list to do was to try the Italian gluten-free McDonald's. So, so far I've tried the Spanish gluten-free McDonald's and the Hungarian gluten-free McDonald's. And both of those were actually pretty decent. I kind of had high hopes for the Italian one considering their whole country is so good at gluten-free food. So we went inside and ordered our gluten-free bun, which was just very easy to find on the list. Then we had to wait like 20 minutes as people came and went. But we finally got it and it arrives packaged, which is fine. They have a collaboration with Shah and they seal it so there's no cross-contamination risks. A little bit interesting to have a burger in a package. Not unheard of, but just a bit interesting. Here's me trying it. It's definitely dry and a little bit cold in the middle. If I was to place it, I'd say Spain's the best, Hungary's second, Italy's coming in at third at the moment. But I haven't tried everywhere, so I'll keep I'll keep updating you. <laughs> Your thoughts? It's stuck to my tooth. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wouldn't get another one. No. <laughs> I think the issue is that it can't come with any like vegetables or ingredients because it all gets heated up inside the plastic wrapper. But the bun is actually quite nice. The bun's nice. The bun's really nice. The bun's nice. Go Shah. Sticky. It is I don't think you should describe a burger as sticky. Sticking to my teeth. <laughs> Let's never eat that again. <laughs> yeah, so my main word to describe it was sticky. Definitely coming in last for gluten-free McDonald's. But hey, I've got eight more countries to visit for their gluten-free McDonald's, so... It might not be in last place the whole time. <laughs> I posted the burger on Instagram saying it was a bit shit and people were like, well, you know, at least there's an option. Honestly, it was that bad. I don't even think it should be an option. <laughs> but then we did some more touristy things. We went and saw the Duomo. We went and saw the Galleria. And we also went to the Leonardo da Vinci Museum where they sort of made up all of his inventions. Like his flying ones, like his flying bike. None of them would work, but it was cool. It was cool to see them. <laughs> then it was time for some ice cream. And oh my goodness, you are always in safe hands if you're near a Grom. And thankfully, the Groms are literally everywhere in Milan. Maybe in Rome as well, I'm not too sure. But there's like 14 Groms in Milan. I literally walked five minutes and I would see one. It was fantastic. If you haven't heard of Grom, they are an entirely gluten-free gelato shop. I'm not just talking about the gelato, I'm talking about the cones as well. Everything in those shops are gluten-free, so you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. So for our first trip to Grom, mum chose the pistachio and salted caramel flavours. And they were good, but I think I really won here with the nougat and the strawberry combo. 
it was out of this world. I haven't found the nougat flavor in London, but my goodness, if you see it, get that one. It's it's beautiful. We were sort of snacking the whole day, so I guess that was kind of our lunch. Then we headed back to the hotel for another cheeky Aperol spritz and a bit of a like sit on the balcony, sit on the balcony and watch the sunset type vibe. It is really beautiful. That night I did some really intense research on what restaurants would be open. I'd always think that I had one and then I'd look on their Instagram or I'd look on their Facebook page and then it turns out they're closed. So definitely a good tip for if you're traveling in this time is check their Instagram and Facebook page and website, all of them, <laughs> to see if they're open because a lot of the time we'll only say in one place that they're closed. I also found using online booking systems quite helpful because... If they weren't open, they wouldn't have the bookings allowed in that slot. Or you can just call them as well. So for dinner, we headed to a place called El Piccolo Padre, which I think means the little father. <laughs> and they had the same sort of vibe as Mama Eat. Basically, everything on the menu could be made gluten-free as well. Ended up ordering another Aperol Spritz, of course. And then we got a pizza to share, which had olives. Mum wanted artichoke on that. You would not believe how hard that was to communicate. The word for artichoke was really difficult for me to pronounce in Italian, but it was delicious. Anyway, we also got a pasta. This wasn't the pasta we ordered. <laughs> there was a little bit of a language barrier, but they gave us a huge pot of Parmesan cheese. So we're just like, eh, we'll make it work. <laughs> of course, once again, we went for the dessert. And for some reason, we ended up ordering the tiramisu again because we don't, we don't like change. The first time they brought it out, I asked if it was gluten-free and they're like oh, no even though I did ask for it gluten-free of course but I think we had someone who is just starting out so it was like totally fine it's just always good to you know double check that things are gluten-free no matter how annoying you sound after that we walked back to the Duomo because we needed to stretch out our tummies <laughs> and we saw it at night and it was really beautiful now we enter the third day which was probably the hardest day for me gluten-free wise there was a place I really wanted to visit, the Milano Senza Glutine supermarket, which is a supermarket that is literally gluten-free. Everything is gluten-free. And there was one right by us, and then there was one about 45 minutes away, and then the rest were like quite, quite a journey away that we wouldn't have been able to make. We went to the one that was by us, and it did say it was open on uh, Google. Why did I trust it? We got there, it was closed, unfortunately. So to cheer ourselves up, I was like, mum, can we just go to a regular supermarket and, and experience the gluten-free section there? And she's like, of course. So we went to a Carrefour, Carrefour, don't know how to say that, but that proven to be one of my favorite supermarkets for gluten-free food, same when we were in Barcelona. Anyway, we went there, amazing, an amazing section of gluten-free food. So I bought a few things to take back home, got some Rolini biscuits, some Madeleines with chocolate chips, some biscuits, con mil milifiori, I don't know how to say that, sorry, and plum cakes with chocolate in them, and also some like yogurty rice cakes there. After breakfast, we headed to a coffee shop that was just down the road from the hotel, and it just so happened that all of their biscuits on the packaged biscuit shelves were gluten-free. Not even gluten-free. I think they were dairy-free and vegan as well, which was just such a surprise. It was just this random local coffee shop that just had so many gluten-free options. So we got another cappuccino and we also got some little pistachio. They're called special pockets. I don't know. They're just, they're just little biscuits to have with your cup of tea. While we were having the cappuccino, we were talking about, should we try get to the other uh, gluten-free supermarkets just up the road. It's only one train. So I even checked on their Instagram and it did say that one was open and I was pretty sure that that was the one that we were going to. We took 30 minutes on the train to get there, walked about 10 minutes to find that it also was unfortunately closed. This was like dangling a treat in front of my face. I looked in the window and there were so, so many rows just full of delicious gluten-free food that I couldn't have and it looked like they usually had like a little bakery counter it was honestly my fault I didn't cross-reference the exact location I thought it was the right place but it turned out it wasn't the one that is open was much much further north basically halfway to Lake Como so that was a little bit sad I was hoping we were going to be able to get some lunch there because we had a big walking tour that afternoon um 
obviously we didn't so we went back to another supermarket the two markets which i found had a lot of good gluten-free food like these feta biscotti a lot of biscuits and like platter type things lots of crisps that were gluten free after that we went to another restaurant I can't remember which one it was but it also ended up being closed and then I tried to find another place that was just a chain that I assumed surely would be open which also ended up being closed so all we managed to have for lunch that day was like a coke zero at this random pizza place and that was before a three hour walking tour so I think this was probably my lowest point in Milan just because I I really do value a good meal <laughs> and I really function far, far better after having a good meal. I did have some of those brioche type croissants that aren't really real croissants, but I had them on me. So I was sort of picking at them while we did this three hour walking tour in about 35 degree heat. The first part was fun. We went and saw the last supper. I couldn't take any videos on the inside. And for the next two and a half hours, we walked to the Milan castle, stayed there for a bit. And then walked to the dorm hall, which we'd already seen, but honestly, it wasn't my favourite part of the trip. But mum wanted to do a walking tour, so we did that. But by the end of that, it was about 6pm and we were so tired. We'd done about 20,000 steps, but without any proper lunch or breakfast. So I just sort of did a quick Google and I ended up finding a poke house, which I think are also in London. And in my memory, I was like, I'm pretty sure they're really good for gluten-free food. So just fingers crossed, we walk five minutes to the closest one. They're actually in quite a few places. So they're quite sort of a handy one to drop in on. And I said to the lady, do you have anything that's gluten-free? And she's like, everything. Everything's gluten-free except for this one mayonnaise and one other thing that I can't remember. <laughs> and I was like, thank you so much. Me and mum were both like, wow thank you so much and we both got a couple of poke bowls which we managed to get back to the hotel so we could eat them in a nice calm environment which was in the garden terrace of the hotel um, where we all of course ordered another apple spritz the poke bowl i got was like tofu edamame vegan chicken nuggets rice avocado carrots crispy fried onions that were gluten-free and with a beautiful teriyaki sauce on top that was of course gluten-free as well you know when you're just so hungry and something like that just slaps so hard oh my god it was the best meal ever then we went and sat on the roof and watched the sunset again because when you've got the opportunity to watch the sunset you gotta take it and then we had a bit of a rest and i decided it was time for me to pop out again first i found another supermarket and if you're on a city break, the one thing I learned is just go into it when you see one. They even had no gluten on one of their aisles, so I was like, I'm in the right place. So I got the wafers and then headed to Out of the Box, which is another completely gluten-free gelato place, not just Grom. They've got Out of the Box as well. I think there's only one or two locations in Milan, but this was really interesting. They have a whole gluten-free menu and then a gluten-free and vegan menu. Of course, once again, when they say gluten-free, they mean it. That means the cones, all the ice creams, all the toppings are gluten-free. I got a sort of mango coconut one and then a hazelnut flavor on the bottom, which was just a really nice way to end kind of a stressful hungry day oh look another grom and that was the end of our last full day in milan but the next morning things really took a turn for the up there was a gluten-free bakery in milan that was open and the reason i was so stoked be is because there are so many gluten-free 100 percent gluten-free bakeries in milan that were closed that i was dying to try like uh pamper me is one of them I don't know why I hadn't thought to check earlier, but I went on their Instagram and they said they were open the whole month. So we went to Officina Zero, which is 100% gluten-free, of course, and they had flavoured croissants. So I got a jam one and mum got a pistachio one, which she said was one of the best gluten-free pastries she's ever had. So I was a bit jealous. My jam one was good, but her one kind of looked like it slapped a little bit harder. We didn't get to stay that long and there weren't too many things in the cabinet. I think they had sort of a reduced menu for the summer, but they also had some like bread type things, some pies that I would have loved to have tried and I'm um, kicking myself. I only realized it was open on our last day, especially as it was only a 10 minute walk from our hotel. But oh well, you live and you learn. For our last meal, we got on the rainbow tram and headed once again to Mama Eat because we just could not be bothered struggling. 
and mama eat is delicious as well this time we wanted to go for some pasta because we sort of pizzaed ourselves out on the last two days we also got of course our last aperol spritz of the trip we also got for a starter this like massive croquette a 25 centimeter croquette with like cheese and rice inside it and it had this pistachio cream on top out of this world it was phenomenal <laughs> It was so cheesy and crunchy and good and we were just so happy we ordered it. Pasta came, I got like a vegetable, cheesy, mushroomy one and mum got like a carbonara with rigatoni pasta. Look at this cheese. This is like a considerable amount of cheese in my pasta. It was fantastic. It was delicious. After that I didn't video it but someone had sent me a message saying there's an amazing place to get gluten-free cannoli and you have to visit it and so I was like, okay mum how about one last trip to go get some gluten-free cannoli and we'd been talking about cannoli the entire trip and we're like let's just do it <sighs> it was closed <laughs> but you know what a perfect way to round out the trip <laughs> after that we went to the airport and headed back to London honestly it was a really good trip and I think we managed really well considering I'd say about 80% of the places I'd planned to go were closed but hey, we're all learning valuable life lessons here and I hold no grudge. I think everywhere should have like a two week sort of shutdown period. I think everyone deserves at least two weeks break over the summer that they don't have to worry about their business or anything. But it just means I'm going to have to go back and try those few bakeries that I didn't go to. So speaking of that, I did make a lovely gluten-free Milan map and I've got to add a few things onto it. But by the time this video comes out, it will be nice and ready for you guys. So I'll put the link to the Google map below. I've got the opening times on there. Please remember they're subject to change. And I didn't get to go to all of them. But these are just what I have found online and wanted to try it for myself. So if you go, just make sure you mention that you can't have gluten or you've got celiac disease or an allergy. Yada, yada, yada. So yeah, that was my trip. It was a really good time. I still ate really well. Mama ate. Mama Eat was out there saving us and if you can go, definitely go and order those freaking huge, I think they're called Arancino. You gotta get them, that was a real highlight of the trip. To summarise my tips for you if you're heading to Italy or Milan and are uh, gluten free. One, if you're going for food, probably don't go in the last two weeks lowest. <laughs> two, it is a lot easier if you learn just a few phrases like senza glutine. I think it's always a little bit more helpful and a little bit more polite. And three, just have fun. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Honestly, Italy for me has always been one of the easiest places to be gluten free, even more so than the UK. So even if you're struggling to find a restaurant, most of the big supermarket brands have a great selection of gluten free food. I'm not just talking about that from this one experience in Milan. I did go like on a road trip to Italy like quite a few years ago. And we went through tiny towns, tiny little towns. But every place I felt like I could eat. That's not to say no one's ever been glutened in Italy. Definitely has happened. Um, but it's just one of the more easier places, in my opinion, to be gluten free. But anyway, the map is in my description if you want to take a look at it for yourself. If you've got any questions about the places I went to, just let me know. Alright, I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Ciao.